Welcome back to complete our discussion on hospice care from the medical perspective. Joining me again, Dr. Thomas Cosner, Medical Director of St. Francis Hospice. Let's jump in now. Okay. Want to ask you about some other symptoms that tend to be major for people, um, especially near the end of life, and how you're managing those. Uh, let's look at um, nausea, nausea and vomiting. Uh -huh. Well, again, it's, it's similar to the way we approach pain in that we try to identify what's causing the nausea. Okay. Not all nausea is the same. Uh, there's uh, what we call central uh, nausea, which is more uh, brain-induced in in, from different chemicals or chemo chemotherapy that they've already had. Okay. Uh, then we look at uh, is it induced by uh, obstruction or is there uh, something going on in the stomach or in the intestines that's causing the nausea. Uh, you know, instead of uh, tr having a medication that treats all mm -hmm, nausea, mm -hmm. we again, we look at the cause of the nausea and then we choose the medication that's, that's appropriate for the nausea. Uh, in general, we can get most nausea under control. Uh, and it seems to be, uh, sometimes it's just anxiety uh, related, their nausea is. Okay. But uh, sometimes we have uh, uh, different medicines we use and sometimes we have to use some in combination. Okay, and so you mentioned too with anxiety. So anxiety too can be a big component that people oh, absolutely. will struggle with. So uh, once again, people get very concerned with anxiety if you're putting them on something that's just gonna really zonk them out right. so that they're dysfunctional. So how do you handle the anxiety well, portion? This, this is where we, we bring in the full, another point where we bring in the whole team. Okay. Uh, a lot of times we have medical social workers that are tra trained in behavioral health management, most of them are, and they come in and they can talk to the patient. We have, this is where we bring in our ministers and our chaplains uh, as part of the team that maybe can help with what might be making them anxious. And then we, of course, we look at the medications that we can change. Either some medicine is causing the nausea or, or we can treat them with some medicine to, or to ha causing the anxiety or we can treat them with some medicine for the anxiety to maybe help them in that sense. Okay, and once again, if uh, they sort of are getting over their anxious state or able to manage it better themselves, then you wean them off absolutely. of that particular medication. Yes, absolutely. We, uh, the nurses uh, may visit the patient daily or they mm -hmm. may visit the patient twice a week, once a week, depending on what the symptoms are like. Now our aides mm -hmm. go in there more frequently, but, but our nurses are in there uh, as often as they need to go in mm -hmm. and then they can adjust the medicine up or down whatever the, the situation uh, brings. Okay, now what about shortness of breath? Because many times, uh, and to be short of breath can be even more frightening Absolutely. because you really are gasping for breath a lot or you can't seem to get enough air in yeah. and so and which can increase anxiety. Absolutely. Um, so how do you work with the shortness of breath? Well you know you look again uh, I'm going back you get to the cause of okay. what's causing it is it an obstructive airway problem uh, is it congestive heart failure where they may have uh, build up a fluid on their lungs so you identify the cause of the uh, shortness of breath even if it's anxiety induced uh, mm -hmm. shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. If once you identify the, the cause then you can treat the symptoms you know we of course we provide oxygen uh, if we deem that that's necessary uh, we, we provide bronchodilators which dilate out the uh, bronchial airways mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, know, you know we use all Diff all different kinds of ways to manage uh, uh, shortness of breath. Again, we also use our, our counselors and uh, things like that to help keep the patient calm because a lot of times, uh, you know, I had a visit with a patient the other day where all we needed to do was start a fan on the patient and she had that sensation that her shortness of breath was, was much improved and so she calmed down and it was a cascade of improvement where the patient got better without a lot of medical intervention. You know, and that's a good point that you make and why it's good to have these others on the team because uh, this is, that's somewhat similar, it's not the same, but I know when I'm on an airplane, um, I just really freak out until I can get enough airflow because I just don't feel like I'm, I'm going to be able to breathe very well. Mm -hmm. But once I get that airflow going, I kind of ease Perfect out. Example. So yeah. that's the, I can relate to the fan concept. Right. It feels like you're just getting more air. Right. We look at all the modalities there is, and that's, that, that's what's kind of fun. And 
and, and the, the, the nice part of hospice is that we can really make a difference with some of the simpler things that uh, help people and, and uh, you know, unlike a lot of medicine, you mm -hmm. see immediate results in their symptoms because we're all about symptom management. Now let me ask this one question because you did mention that sometimes the shortness of breath could be due to an obstruction. And so since hospice care is aimed at the palliative supportive function, what if an obstruction is developing? The person is at the end stage of life. Mm -hmm. uh, is that really probably going to be treated and removed or mm -hmm. is it where you just really in working with the attending, you're just gonna really have to bump up some of the... Yeah, uh, we do both and then there's also a part of uh, hospice people don't realize, we can send a patient in for palliative radiation okay. care which is covered by the hospice benefit. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, we're not limited to just things we can do at home. Uh, you know, we, we can actually, and we, are, we work with uh, um, uh, quite a few palliative radiologists that uh, help us manage some of our uh, things like obstructions and things like that where there's mass impending on uh, organs and things like that. So we use, if it is a part, if, if, if it's an aggressive therapy required that helps their symptoms, yes. then we're all part of that. Excellent. We are, we are uh, we believe in that. Excellent, well in our last little few minutes here, give us an idea of the types of conditions that you have seen or could benefit from hospice care. Well, besides uh, our cancer patients that are mm -hmm. at the end of their life mm -hmm. and need uh, uh, palliative care, uh, and hospice, uh, we also uh, treat congestive heart failure patients, patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease okay. like end-stage emphysema, uh, dementia, end-stage dementia. Okay. Uh, we also see uh, liver cirrhosis, uh, renal failure patients that are nearing the end of their life that need uh, symptomatic management and uh, good hospice care. Uh, and we see some debility patients that are a mix of different comorbid conditions that have multiple comorbid conditions and that's causing them to uh, uh, fail okay. and uh, they need symptomatic care. So it's the broad spectrum that you're seeing and even like you said in relation to young children, people should realize that they can right. reach out to hospice for Absolutely. assistance uh, with them as well. Because sometimes we, we don't think about our kids that yeah. way. We feel like there's just not a, we, we don't feel like we're really reaching out to as many patients that probably need hospice okay. service. And it's a lot of us, it's just uh, misinformation. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Cosner. You helped us a lot understand. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Pam. Well, that's our show for Health Alert. I'm Pam Butler. I'd love to hear your comments, questions, or suggestions for future shows. Please write me at Health Alert USA, PO Box 50913, Tulsa, Oklahoma 74150. Or if you're on the email trail, please email me at healthalertusa at gmail.com. And also visit me on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash healthalertusa. Remember, talk with your attending physician, uh, get some more insight into hospice, and know when you really need to, or a loved one, or someone you know really should access. Take care. This program would not be possible without the support of OU Physicians in Tulsa.